What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Yammy Noob and today we're taking a look at the MT-09. For those of you who remember last year we made a video in our So You Want a Blank Bike series on the MT-09 and we discussed how the designers thought it was a Roadster Motard. Now today we're actually going to be taking a look at that moniker because wouldn't you know it, I happen to be the proud owner of not one but two supermotos. So today we're going to be taking a look at the MT-09 versus an actual supermoto and seeing if they have anything in common. Let's get into it. Alrighty guys, first thing I want to point out is this is obviously our giveaway MT-09. If you want to get entered to win this motorcycle, click the link down in the description below. Go to yamminoob.co, get yourself signed up to win. You get access to our Discord server, exclusive live streams, all that good stuff. But if you don't want to sign up, you can go to yamminoobmerch.com, get yourself a hat, a t-shirt, whatever you want. Every dollar you spend there is an entry to win this bike. This one is mine. It's not a giveaway bike. I'm keeping it. It's really dirty. Don't judge me. I haven't cleaned it in a while. It's really hard for me to keep this bike clean. Now the first thing I want to do today is actually define what I consider a supermoto because these things look nothing alike but they do have a lot of similarities and we're going to see how much the MT-09 actually resembles a classic looking supermoto. So let's dive into what makes a sumo a sumo. Now looking at this very dirty motorcycle, underneath it, all it looks like is a dirt bike, right? It's got long travel suspension, it's got this big long beak, it's got hand guards, it's got a long banana seat. But the thing is, is this bike was actually designed, believe it or not, to participate in a game show. Back in the day, there was a show called Super Bikers, and they designed these motorcycles to participate in street races, dirt races, and enduro races too. And they had to do it all on one motorcycle, so they picked a dirt bike and modified it with big street tires. Nowadays, supermotos are actually kind of hard to find. KTM and Husqvarna are the only ones who make them from Eurobike manufacturers. And no, the Hypermotard does not count. And Suzuki still makes the DRZ400. But the one thing that these all have in common is they still have the long travel suspension, high ground clearance, and low weight from their dirt bike ancestors. But they also have 120s out front and 160s in the back on 17 inch rims which give them sport bike style handling. Now let's bring the MT-09 back in here and see what kind of DNA we can see in that bike from its supermoto ancestors. All right, so taking a look at the MT-09, you can see it has a similar style seat, one long singular piece that allows you to move around. You also do have a lot more suspension travel on this bike as opposed to something like a sport bike. This thing is much higher up and it has a taller seat height too. It is a little bit heavier than the Supermoto, though not by too much. My bike weighs in at about 360 pounds. This is a little bit over 400, and it does come down to that much bigger engine. This thing is putting down 115 horsepower to the tune of my bike's 72, although this is a sort of different motorcycle, so comparing them exactly engine to engine doesn't really make a lot of sense. The main thing I really wanted to talk about today is how these bikes handle and how they feel to ride and there's only one way to do that. So let's take the SMCR out for a quick little rip and get a baseline feel for what a supermoto motorcycle feels like. Alrighty guys, starting this off in motion on my SMCR, the main thing that you notice when you get on a proper supermoto like this is how tall it is. It is ridiculously tall. Uh, for a beginner with a small inseam, man, a supermoto is not where you want to be starting because if I want to stand this bike on the ground, I'm basically, I can stick my foot out all the way while I'm riding and just barely be touching the ground. So it's a little hard for me to flat foot this bike and I don't have any preload dialed in. Once I do, it's just going to get even harder for me to put a foot down on this bike. But with that comes an enormous amount of space on this bike. You have all the room in the world that you want to spread out. You can move back if you want. You can ride it super aggressive up on the tank if you want. It's a, it's a very forgiving kind of motorcycle because you can move around and do whatever you want with it. Another thing you notice about supermotos is how 
the turn in on them is slightly different than on a sport bike because there's so much suspension travel on this motorcycle you almost need to compress the front suspension going into a turn and then get into the turn a little bit so you add a little bit more front brake when you ride a supermoto just because you want that suspension to be tightened up and not to wiggle while you're in a turn although because I have this WP Apex suspension that's not really that big of an issue for me getting back to the ergonomics though the main thing that you notice is how commanding your riding stance is on this it's a very upright you know aggressive it doesn't feel like you want to necessarily chuck it into a corner and go knee down like your Marquez or whatever. You want to be upright and stick your foot out and lean the bike down. You push the bike down as opposed to leaning with it. It's a very different style of riding. And thanks to the low weight, this thing is really easy to chuck around a corner. There's basically no resistance when you dip in. It's so easy to just guide this motorcycle through a corner. And that's not just this bike, that's supermotos in general. They're very easy motorcycles to ride. And that's part of the reason why I'm so excited about the upcoming KLX 300, which is theoretically a supermoto with a slightly shorter seat height. So hopefully that allows more people to get into supermoto riding. Now everybody knows the stereotypical supermoto guy is the dude popping a massive stand-up wheelie just going down the road, you know, without the front wheel even touching the ground. And this bike will happily do that. I can't because I'm not that good of a rider, but this motorcycle could do that. You could wheelie this thing all day and it will happily do it. But another thing that you notice about it is just how easy going it can be to ride a bike like this. You know, the Thumper, it's not the smoothest engine. I mean, it shakes and rattles real good. But it can be just a motorcycle you can sit and cruise around the city on or hit a twisty road and be fine. Could you spend all day on this motorcycle? Yes. Do you want to? God, no. I have spent about the longest time I spent in the saddle on this bike was ooh, I think it was about four hours and by the end of it I wanted to die it was awful spending four hours in the saddle on this thing and that's not just because my seat is stiff that's because it's just not that comfortable the seats really narrow again it's coming from a dirt bike and dirt bikes have narrow seats the suspension is more plush because of the travel, but you're still basically sitting on a sawhorse. So while the ergonomics are roomy and comfortable, the style of the seat is just not conducive for a long day's trip. And if you're actually planning on traveling with this bike, good luck because you can't cram anything on this motorcycle. It has zero storage capacity and basically no accommodation for any luggage so it's really just about hitting the track and goofing off all day long and that's really the supermoto ethos just hit a twisty road and pop some wheelies so now that we've got a baseline on our supermoto here let's go get the mt09 and see how it stacks up the main thing i want to compare there is exactly how it feels to ride the motorcycle i don't necessarily care about the horsepower because it's a different engine and it doesn't really compare all that well but I want to compare the feeling of riding that motorcycle compared to the supermoto and see whether or not the MT-09 really actually nailed that supermoto ethos now instead of starting the MT-09 out on a twisty road I wanted to bring it out on a highway and tell you one big thing that this bike does that no supermoto does well and that is cruising on the highway supermotos are not designed for highway cruising they just aren't uh, it's not what they were built to do and this bike is much more capable on a highway 
That's not to say that my bike is bad on a highway. It'll do it. I mean, it'll go as fast as you want it to. It's just this has way more overhead to do highway speeds. It's less vibrational. It's more comfortable. There's more wind protection. This bike, on its own, is better than any supermoto can be on the highway. And if that's something that's really important to you, then you got to make sure you consider that because, again, as a two-time supermoto owner, I can tell you, highway is not, uh, not their forte. Now let's get this thing in a twisty road and really shake it down. Now highway ability notwithstanding, the first thing you notice about this motorcycle is how much more motorcycle there is than on a supermoto. You're actually sitting inside this motorcycle as opposed to on top of it. Your knees are inside this big tank cutout. This tank is wide and flat. There's a lot more going on up here. And while there is a lot more bike, you don't really feel a lot more weight, which is pretty impressive given that, you know, this bike has about 50-ish pounds on my Supermoto. You'd think that calculates into a motorcycle that feels a little bit slower, a little bit more lethargic, but it handles just as well as my Supermoto, although this bike does feel a little bit funny. I'd actually liken this bike to if Yamaha had crossbred an R1 with a DRZ400. It's got the screaming power of a bike that's bred to just go stupid fast and a little bit of the handling characteristics of a supermoto and it doesn't it doesn't quite come together perfectly i see what they were trying to go for with this motorcycle you have a very commanding seating position you want to sit forward on it sit upright and kind of push it around but when you get it on the side of the tire you don't want to lean it so much like a supermoto you don't want to push down and kind of counter lean with your foot out like that. that. That feels really weird on this motorcycle. Instead, you want to lean with your body, lean off like you're on a normal sport bike. And in that sense, this bike is kind of in two minds about what it wants to be. It wants to be fun and light and upright and really easy to flick over. But it also wants to be a sport bike that you want to really lean and get aggressive with. And as a result, it kind of doesn't do either thing that well. Now, admittedly, I think this bike is better for it because it makes it a more usable everyday motorcycle. My Supermoto, while I love it to bits, just doesn't have the things that this motorcycle does. You know, it's, this is way more comfortable to sit on. I could spend all day because the seat is nice and wide. It's really flat. It's, I can just spread out on this bike. I can't really do that on my Supermoto. Yes, I can move around, but there's no spot where the seat becomes really comfortable. Also, this motorcycle just has way more power. I'm secure enough in my own manhood to admit that this motorcycle absolutely trounces my SMCR. It just, it, it, there's no comparison. This thing is just blisteringly fast. And if that's something you want, this is a great place to look for it, and you can't really get that out of any supermoto. Now, do I think comparing this to a supermoto is perfectly accurate? No, not really. I think that by calling this a Roadster Motard when they were originally marketing it and manufacturing it, what they actually did is create a whole other kind of motorcycle. I think a Roadster Motard is more sport bike than supermoto. Although, one thing that's kind of interesting to note is this bike feels fine when you put it on a dirt road and you can almost stand up on it, you know? It has a lot of supermoto characteristics about it. It's shockingly comfortable and compliant to do this sort of thing with, believe it or not. It's taking a lot of focus, so I'm going to sit back down. <laughs> See, watch this. 
completely fine just trundling along this stuff. I could I could definitely throw put some knobbies on this and take this a scrambling. Of course you could. I have no idea where I am. I'm so confused. So would I recommend the MT-09 for a Supermoto boy? No, I really wouldn't. And that's because it's going to feel too weird. It's not really what you want out of a Supermoto. It's not going to feel like you're sitting on top of it, like you can really push it around. This is a motorcycle that you ride much more like a normal bike. And it really does feel like it, because sure, the handlebars are nice and upright and wide, but your feet are in a different position and they create a more aggressive bend in your knee than on a Supermoto. The pegs are further back. I think the MT-09 is for the guy who wants a bike that really is just about having a good time, but they want to spend more time on the bike. They want to be able to ride it all day long. They want to be comfortable while they do it. And they want the ability to carry a passenger. That's one thing that supermotos are dismal at. There's next to no accommodation for a passenger on a supermoto. And it just so happens that on mine, I deleted the passenger pegs. But riding a supermoto with a passenger just feels bad. It feels real bad. In that sense, this bike isn't as specialized. It's more normal, more able to do the kinds of things that you would really want to do on a motorcycle. But it still has that really good, fun flair. And again, my God, is this power plant just juicy. It is a absolute screamer. And sure, it handles a little funny, but for the average everyday rider, this thing is beyond perfect. It's so good. And so I think by calming down some of the supermoto eccentricities, they've actually made a better motorcycle. It just so happens it's not the motorcycle that I want, but it is an excellent bike. And so I think by calming down some of the supermoto eccentricities and smoothing over some of the weirdness of a supermoto, they made a bike that is actually a little bit better. It just so happens it's not the bike that I want, but I can admit that this is a better motorcycle than mine in a lot of respects. Now, with all that being said, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Now, if you want to get entered to win this motorcycle, you got to click the link in the description down below. Go to yamminoob.co. Get yourself signed up. You can also go to yamminoobmerch.com. Buy yourself a hat or whatever. Every dollar you spend is going to get you an entry to win this bike. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Between this and my desert sled, you might think I'm just some horrible biscotti boy, but really, if you click this video right over here, I will prove to you that I love more motorcycles than just Ducati biscottis. Click it and find out.